This is a demonstration of our preferred method of right-sided subclavian vein catheterization using a linear probe. Be sure to have a comfortable working position with the ultrasound machine within your line of sight. Start by identifying the clavicle. Visualize a line at a right angle to the body's midline and align the probe with it. Tilt cranially until the subclavian vein and artery come into view, here highlighted in blue and red respectively. Note that it's not always possible to achieve a view where both vessels are visible at the same time, but it's vital to identify both in order to avoid an accidental arterial puncture. The artery usually pulsates and is located deeper more cranially, while the vein is shallower and expands and contracts with the respiratory cycle, though note that it might actually pulsate due to the proximity to the artery. Prep a wide area including the clavicle and up on the neck, following your local guidelines. While waiting for the chlorhexidine to dry, prep your tray. Place your equipment in the order you will be using it, and make sure to loosen all needle covers. Everything should be easily accessible by one hand since you do not want to move the probe once you've located the perfect ultrasound view. Place the drapes and make sure to leave some space on the neck above the clavicle. Position the probe as far medially as possible where the vessel is less prone to collapse and the diameter is larger. This is especially important in the hypovolemic patient. Inject the local anesthetic superficially a few centimeters from the probe. Cover the point of cannulation and where the sutures will go. Then inject towards the vein but avoid puncturing it. Use the empty 2cc syringe as an improvised handle and place the index finger along the cannula to facilitate lateral displacement. Advance the cannula towards the vein in a continuous motion, but proceed only if you see the needle tip. Aspiration of dark non-pulsatile blood indicates that we've successfully punctured the vein. Insert the guide wire in the usual fashion and confirm its correct position by identifying a hyperechoic line in the subclavian vein. Next, move the probe to the neck. If the guide wire has deviated cranially, this will be seen as a hyperechoic dot in the internal jugular vein. This is readily apparent in this sequence from another patient where we were able to immediately retract and reposition the guide wire. Tilt the probe caudally and keep the jugular vein in the middle of the screen to find where it merges with the subclavian vein to form the superior vena cava. With this manoeuvre, the correct guide wire position can be verified. Note that the hyperechoic medial pleura, marked in green, may have a similar appearance as the guide wire, and for the novice, this is a potential pitfall. Proceed with the central line in the usual manner. Then further confirm the venue's placement by observing the height of a non-pulsatile blood column. We're currently performing a validation study, but we believe that most post-procedural x-rays will be redundant if the guide wire position has been confirmed using this technique. For more videos on anesthesia and critical care, go to interanest.org.